Ohio's agriculture industry is well planted, but still growing. From the fields to the research lab, learn how the state's largest industry is contributing to Ohio's economic future. Next on Ohio Means Business. Ohio Means Business on ONN. Presented by The Ohio State University, Ohio State University's Fisher College of Business, The Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center, James Cancer Hospital, and Soloff Research Institute, and The Ohio State University Medical Center. Thanks for joining us for Ohio Means Business. I'm Mike Kallmeyer. Planting season is here. Farmers are eager to get growing again. Agriculture is Ohio's number one industry, and you don't have to drive far to see it in action. The industry has developed deep roots over the years, but advances in technology and research are creating new opportunities to keep it a mainstay for years to come. On this episode, we take a look at the state of agriculture in Ohio, its economic impact and potential for future growth. Coming up, we head to the farm to learn about Ohio's top crops, corn and soybeans. Also ahead, we'll cast a line into a small but fast-growing industry in the Buckeye State, fish farming. Learn why Ohio is leading the nation in aquaculture. And later, the bottom line on Ohio's agriculture industry and what it means for the state's economic future. But first, some fast facts about this massive industry. Agriculture pumps about $93 billion into Ohio's economy every year. It employs one out of every seven Ohioans, or roughly one million people. There are nearly 76,000 farms and 800 food production facilities in the Buckeye State. Ohio is one of only four states in which more than 50% of its land is classified as prime farmland. Nearly all of Ohio farms are family owned and operated, including Fred Yoder Farms in Plain City, Ohio. He's a third generation corn grower and has held numerous leadership roles in the farming industry, including president of the National Corn Growers Association. We recently traveled to Plain City to get his view from the top. Fred, thanks for having us out to the corn farm on a, on a rainy day. We appreciate it. Glad to have you out. We're sitting here in, in one of your warehouses amongst all the, the seed corn and the soybean seeds. Um, you obviously are a corn farmer. Corn is high maintenance, as you were saying, right? <laughs> well, it's, it's, a, it's a management thing. It really is tedious. But yet, like right now, we're waiting in this, you know, as you can know, it's, it's raining. It's time to plant corn. Last year at this time, we were half done with the corn planting, so we were anxious to get to the field to get this crop in the field and get it growing, see, and then we'll spend the rest of the summer uh, tending to it, uh, fertilizing it, and weeding it, and so forth, and then we'll harvest it in, in October. Sometime later in the fall, you'll finally come to harvest. Now, where do you send your corn, and where do different Ohio farmers send their corn? Well, I'll tell you, in central Ohio here, we have a great corn market. We have all kinds of different places we can go. Most of my corn goes to the ethanol market, uh, and be either Bloomingburg or, or Marion, or we got a, a, a high fructose corn syrup plant in Dayton. A lot of it goes there. And I sell an awful lot to the chicken farms up in, in Marion County as well. So we really do have a lot of, of uh, choices here in, in, in central Ohio, which is not to say that the rest of the country it has, but we do it right here. What is the state of the industry? Does, do things look good right now, or have they been better? Actually, I think it's probably as good as it's been in many, many years. I've been farming for about 35 years and, and I've never seen opportunities like this in agriculture. Mainly because the, the profits we're getting today is, it comes from the market. In the old days, uh, we had to depend on the government uh, programs to, to help sustain us, but in those days it was a, it was a, a, a supply-driven market where you know, we just manage the supply, but today it's a demand-driven market. So in other words, the more we grow, uh, the more demand we'll have for it. We got great demand, whether it's overseas as, as exports, whether it's uh, domestically in, in biofuels or, or animal feed. So we, today is, is, a, is a chance of a lifetime, really. I think it's interesting, the supply and demand, uh, when you talk about a, a corn farmer, you really can't have too much out there and you can't have too little. It's very precise, isn't it? It's very precise, but the one thing that the corn farmer has going for us is that we have multiple uses. It's not like uh, some other crops, that, like wheat, for instance, where it's mainly for, for food, uh, or, or feed, well, we have some other things like ethanol and, and, uh, and bioproducts that we can make stuff out of. So therefore, if, if one market is a little bit sluggish or, or got a surplus, we move to a different market. So we have a lot of different options as corn, but with that comes a lot of uh, risk. But one of the things that uh, we have to keep in mind is this is the best prices we've had in, in many years, but 
it's the, it's the riskiest uh, time we've had in many years. It's the most expensive corn crop I'll ever plant this spring. Uh, with that becomes uh, the major thing of managing our costs because as, as most people don't realize, uh, agriculture is probably as, as energy intensive of any industry in the, in the world today. So we use a lot of energy. So just like consumers that go to the pump and, and, and really you know, hurt when they have to pay you know, 380 or $4 for a, a, a gallon of, of fuel, we have to do the same thing. So uh, right. we just have to really manage our, our costs. Uh, when you talk about the price per bushel, your livelihood is based on that, right? What are the perfect uh, conditions uh, as far as supply and demand go uh, to maximize your price per bushel? Well, the, what we really want is, is to manage that carryover. We want to have maybe a, a, half a, a half a billion to a billion bushels of corn that we can carry over from one year to the next. But not to, more than that. But right? not more than that. When you get over a billion bushels, then all of a sudden you really curtail uh, planting corn. So. This is a viable and, and interesting market, so we have to kind of keep that balance between a half and a billion bushels so that we become a very reliable supplier to the end user. You know what's fascinating about the agriculture industry is the technology over the years. I'm sure you've seen like light speed technology just in the last 10 years. I'm going to tell you that today's agriculture is not my father's agriculture. It's completely different. Right. Uh, in fact, if dad was still living, I wonder what he would think of how I farm today. I haven't uh, used a plow in, in probably 14 years. Uh, I'm, I'm strictly a no-till or a, a conservation till farmer, so I just opened a little slot and put the seed right there to keep the uh, to keep the cover on there and utilize the cover as part of my weed management too. Your dad bought this farm back in 1958. Things 1958. were simpler then, right? Much simpler, <laughs> much simpler. Uh, but uh, the the yields have probably tripled since uh, he was farming back in 1958 to 60. So our productivity has just basically tripled compared to what it used to be. Because of technology? Because of technology and also uh, new techniques as farming. Uh, we, have, we got attachments on the planter that will do a lot of things to, the, to prepare the ground and, and place that fertilizer so it's most ideal. And, and we can also reduce our fertilizer uses because of that too, because of the way we place it now. We have institutions around here, especially Ohio State, with a, an amazing agriculture program. Uh, having that nearby just helps a lot, doesn't it, oh, with the, I've, with the I've, science and technology? Absolutely. Of it. I'm, I'm good friends with Dr. Mosier at Ohio State, the dean, and, and they've, the, their extension field people are just wonderful when we come out here and we utilize this new technology and, and try to figure out ways that we can even do it uh, for less money as well. So you think 10 years from now, it's, you're going to look back and, on, on this day and say, wow, <laughs> if we only knew then what we knew now? Oh, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, just, it's just really changed. For instance, like these corn varieties right here, this, these corn varieties we're sitting right here, that's actually resistant to, uh, to specific insects. We don't have to use a broad spectrum insecticide to kill insects now because this corn here is it's wood room resistant. So all of a sudden, uh, you know, just by, by putting a, one particular gene in this variety, uh, a rootworm will, will bite into it and, and die. And that way, all of the good environmental uh, effects of, of good insects are still present. So. We can be very selective, we can do this uh, in a very non-combative way, and, and we can have higher yields with that way too. What, uh, where do you see the uh, agriculture industry going, and specifically for you as a corn farmer, looking, you said this is a good year, so looking forward, where are we going? Well, today, uh, if you've been watching any of the government uh, uh, su supply and, and demand reports, we need to plant every bit of corn that we possibly can. We're going to be planting about 10 million acres more corn than we did the previous year, and just to supply the demand that we think is going to be out there. So while we have good demand, it's also going to take a good year of, of growing. And, and outside, you know, it's raining now. We've got to get this corn in, a, in the ground to grow. The uh, Fred Yoder Farms is, is a family operation, like many farms across Ohio. Is that the way it should be? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, a lot of times you, people think just because a, farmer is, a farm is larger than it used to be, most, I think 99% of all farms are still family farms. Fred, we appreciate your time. Thanks for having us out on the farm. Thanks for coming.